Good evening and welcome to Sports in Health with Habib Nurbai. This is the first episode that we're featuring on DTV and today we will be covering on the first episode Biokinetics and Sports Science. A lot of you are probably wondering what the profession entails and what it is. And today we have none other than Mr. Avinesh Prasad, who is a senior biokineticist, to talk with us today. Avinesh Prasad is currently a senior biokineticist working at London Prasad Practice at the Sports Science Institute of South Africa in Newlands, Cape Town. Avi, a pleasure to have you on the show. Welcome. Thanks, Avi. Nice to be here. Tell us, what inspired you to do biokinetics and go within the sports field? Um, I mean, it's quite a, quite a funny story. Um, so I started off uh, when I went to university to go and study engineering. Um, but uh, I found that it didn't really work for me and I uh, had friends who were doing exercise science and uh, sports science and I followed them and found that that was exactly what I wanted to do. Um, and eventually found biokinetics and, and if you look at it, they the two kind of correlate. I mean, with engineering looking at uh, designing different models and stuff like that and with biokinetics we're working with the human body. Um, so that's how I fell into, into biokinetics and that's where my passion comes from, biokinetics. Fantastic and you know they often say that in any career one would probably go towards a diversion and uh, would you say that uh, yours was probably a diversion for the better? Oh, absolutely. Uh, <laughs> I can't see myself uh, sitting behind a desk and, and drawing things and uh, working with uh, little devices and stuff like that. I, I, I prefer working with, uh, with people and, uh, and dealing with the human body itself. Fantastic. You know, they often say if someone is in a career for about 15 years long, which is what you probably did in biokinetics, often one cannot describe experience and a textbook cannot portray that amount of experience. You have to go out there and do it for yourself. And you currently are the textbook right now within the <laughs> profession. When is your next book coming out? <laughs> no, I think there's still a lot to learn. Um, you know, I mean, being biokineticists, we, we're learning all the time. And uh, we're learning from our patients as well. I mean, there's, there's tons of things that uh, we read in the textbooks and, um, and we practice them. Um, but uh, we learn from our patients uh, the right things to do and, and, and how to help them the best that we can. You know, being a biokineticist myself, one always asks, you know, what does a biokineticist do? What is biokinetics? And, you know, I think for a lot of us, we could probably define it as a clinical exercise specialist who functions in alliance with health and medicine. Would you say that would be the same? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I think if we break it down, really, I mean, bio meaning the body and kinetics meaning movement. And, and for me, biokinetics is uh, movement of the body and how I can help to create correct movement. And that's what biokinetics is all about for me. Um, I think also with respect to biokinetics, we, we have quite a diverse range of different biokinetic specialities that we do. Um, so we're involved with orthopedic rehabilitation. Um, we're involved with cardiac rehabilitation, uh, special populations um, like the obese classes. Um, and just in effect, using exercise as a therapeutic modality. So that's, that's where I think biokinetics is at the moment. I think in a simple term, adding on to that is, you know, if a patient is currently ill and they would possibly go to a medical doctor or a physician and get treatment in the forms of pills or in the form of different types of treatment, would you say that, you know, biokinetics instead provides exercise as a modality for treatment through that movements which you have stipulated? Definitely. I think exercise is a pull, <laughs> like any other therapeutic modality. Um, it's just that I think we have the, the positive side effects as opposed to some bad side effects that some medications might have. Um, so yeah, yeah definitely, the, um, I think that's where, where we are as, as biokineticists and that's what we're trying to instill in all our patients. You know, there's often that question from a lot of people who come to us, even patients, do we go to a biokineticist, do we go to a physiotherapist? I mean, what is the difference between the two professions and when would someone know when to go to either a biokineticist or a physiotherapist? Yeah, I think we, there's, a, there's, there's quite a big difference between the two of us. Um, we, there is definitely that gray area and we all know about the gray area. Um, but if I could break it down simply and, and just from some of the readings that I've done, uh, if you sprain your ankle, um, I think the first person, if you don't go to the doctor, is definitely the physiotherapist. Um, there is definite need for physiotherapy treatment at that initial phase, in that acute phase. However, once we start getting more into the getting back onto the field, um, getting back into your work environment, where you need exercises, where you need um, 
um, further strengthening where you need balance and proprioception, then that's where the biokineticist uh, would take over or be handed over from the physiotherapist to the biokineticist. Um, so we both work very, very closely and very hand in hand. Um, and uh, yeah, I think we use the exercises, the therapeutic modality, whereas the physios would use other therapeutic modalities like massage, um, uh, a bit of exercise as well, um, ultrasound, electrical stimulation. Um, our kind of toolbox is more limited towards the exercise, and that's probably why we would like to be referred as exercise specialists. So we're probably looking at ourselves being the panel beaters in the food <laughs> chain. You know, yeah. you kind of have your car, uh, God forbid, but it probably gets damaged. You know, you possibly go through all these different uh, spectrums within the food chain, and there you have it, you come to biokinetics. Are we ready to go back into the sport? Are we ready to go back into life and improve your quality of life? Absolutely. You know, I mean, there's always those questions of whether a physiotherapist can do the same, or if the biokineticist can do the similar interventions that physiotherapy does, but I think you've explained it quite well that you know we kind of the last part in the food chain but also a very a most a very important yeah one no, no, as I well. think it's vital yeah absolutely and uh, and like I said I think uh, we can't cut out the, those other aspects I mean there is a need for us to follow that chain correctly um, and f with all the patients that we've seen I think um, it's important that they have followed the chain and they have a better outcome yeah. and that's what we're looking for is the best outcome for our patients You've mentioned the patients, so what are the common types of patients that you would probably see in your practice on a day-to-day -day well, basis? <coughs> in my practice, I think we focus quite a lot on the orthopedic rehabilitation. Um, like I said, I mean, biokinetics is multifaceted. Um, however, we focus mainly on the orthopedic rehabilitation, so anything from back issues, uh, disc, um, Disc, uh, disc problems, uh, facet joint uh, issues, um, to ACL reconstructions, which is uh, dealing to, with the knee, um, runner's knee, jumper's knee, those kind of issues. Um, but our focus has also changed slightly with, uh, with my practice specifically. We've gone more towards the neurological rehabilitation and specifically spinal cord injuries like paraplegics and quadriplegics. Yeah. I think that's something which is quite vast and it speaks to a bit of a different uh, scenario in Absolutely, terms of the yeah. different health professions. And uh, you know, I'm, I'm sure that there's viewers out there at home who are probably knowing how can they actually alleviate their most common types of you know, ailments that they experience on a day-to-day -day basis. So I think in our practice, what would you then say is the most common types of conditions that you would uh, see in your well, practice? Well, general lower back pain. I mean, yeah. um, I think the most amount of patients we see is probably the guys that are uh, sitting behind the desk and not moving enough. And yeah. I mean, you you know, we our bodies like movement. Uh, we're not used to sitting behind the desk in that poor posture, slouched in front of a computer. Um, that's where the biggest biggest issue comes from. And and and. I mean, looking at other practices in, in the province and, and also in the country, I, I've noticed that a lot of people are more having uh, back rehabilitation classes. And uh, I think that is, is, is very, very important for the, the general population. Um, so back rehab is definitely the one big thing. And getting, getting people up and getting them moving uh, is what we need to, to do. Do you, do you really think it's uh, an abstinence of not playing sport or because purely it's uh, being desk bound to your office all day in that, you know, if you look at the, the past and what our, you know, our forefathers have done is that a lot of the time when they were working, they were probably more on the go and less sitting. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, like right now, what we're currently <laughs> doing, you know. Yes. Uh, so would you say that back pain is probably from our lifestyle or is it? Oh, definitely. I think. Um, I think the, the problem that we have is that, uh, unfortunately, uh, society deems that we have a, a job and work and mm -hmm. um, be behind a desk. Um, and like you said, I think our forefathers who had that more manual labor, whereas now computers do everything for us. I mean, you jump in your car and you drive 500 meters down the road to go buy a loaf of bread. Yeah. Um, so it's as simple as that. I mean, if we get up and get moving, um, I think a lot of our uh, back issues would definitely be alleviated. Um, but I mean, it doesn't take away from those specific issues where there is a need for uh, other interventions and, and, and specific back issues. Yeah. I mean, you mentioned movement and essentially that's what it is, life through movement. So if it's a common problem like your back or your lower back, you know, we would probably prescribe something which is core exercises or any type of modalities to improve that. Could you just perhaps run through what type of exercises you know, uh, we would possibly prescribe to those patients? Well, I think the first thing that we'd probably look at, and in, in terms of an assessment, um, 
we need to know the flexibility. Yeah. Um, and then we talk a lot, and I think a lot of people talk about this core stability kind of thing. Um, and a lot of uh, talk has gone around Pilates and yoga and, and those kind of exercises. Um, so we speak a lot about flexibility, uh, deep core muscles, and we're talking specifically about a specific muscle called transverse abdominis. Um, but uh, in effect, just uh, teaching someone how to activate their core muscles because we, we find that we, we lose those simple contractions by doing sitting activities, yes. um, by not getting into good positions and getting into poor posture, we use the incorrect muscles. Yes. Um, so it's all about teaching the, the correct things and, and looking at that body holistically, not just focusing, okay, the issue is at the back, let's focus on the back. No, we need to look, is there an issue with how you're sitting, or your posture, how you're driving? Um, yeah whether you, you have a, a slight leg length discrepancy yes. or one leg longer than the other. Yes. Um, so there's a whole lot of different issues that we need to, to look at. And, and that's why then an assessment by a biokineticist or physiotherapist for that matter is very, very important. Yeah. Um, so that we can find those specific problems and then tackle them one by one. I completely agree. And I think it's about finding that underlying mechanism that's causing that problem. You know, what's the etiology of that pain or Absolutely. that cause of that pain? And I think a lot when we talk about core stability, immediately what pops up is okay it's my six pack <laughs> yes. or it's your which is termed as your rectus, rectus abdominis, abdominis yes. uh, muscle and I think there's quite a bit of a difference between the transverse abdominis and the rectus abdominis Absolutely. and you know with the transverse abdominis being your deep core muscle with your oblique muscles being in the middle mm -hmm. and your rectus abdominis being out there so, yeah. so I mean once you've activated your core and provided core stability with the assessment what's after that well, then it's to give you correct exercises that obviously, firstly, don't hurt you um, and, uh, and make the, the rest of the structure quite strong and stable. Um, and if we look at the back specifically, I mean, um, we talk about this core stability looking like um, a corset. Um, and if you wear a corset, I mean, in effect, you're going to keep all the structure nice and stable, but the, the muscle structures are not working. Uh, and once you take that corset out, then yeah. everything falls down. Falls down. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah. So it's, it's, it's all those kind of exercises coupled together, focusing on specific muscles that will help to keep your core and your structure as strong as possible. I think that's a very good analogy of you know, what it is. Um, I think another example, if I may put forward, is if you have a pencil and if you break it in half, you now have got your upper body and your lower body. But now we want to put it back together. <laughs> Maybe I'll use something called Prestic. <laughs> Is it stable? No. Absolutely not. not yeah. And Absolutely. perhaps you'll put it in the freezer yeah. to get it more stable again. But I think essentially that's what it is. Mm is that you know, your core does manage both the upper and the lower extremities Absolutely, quite yeah. well. Definitely. But aside from lower back injuries, you know, what else is the most common types that we see? What, what is the most prevalent conditions we see out there right now uh, in public? Well, moving away from, uh, from the orthopedic side of things, yeah. I think um, uh, a lot of talk about um, heart conditions and essentially what we call diseases of lifestyle, yeah. uh, which is your heart attacks, um, cancer, diabetes. Yes. Um, so those are, those are quite a big phenomenon that's, that's going on at the moment. And, and I think we in South Africa are trying to move away from the, the US um, fat kind of person. Um, I think we, we want to have more um, slim, uh, healthy individuals. Uh, not so slim, but more healthy individuals. That's what I'm trying to get at. Um, whereas the states have that big problem of, of obesity. Yes. Um, and I think if we don't, and, and, and I think we are tackling it slowly, but if we don't tackle it correctly, we're going to have that big problem in South Africa as well. And we're going to find that um, uh, our medical uh, fraternities are going to take a big strain from yeah. having to, to cope with these disease of lifestyle, as we call them. Yes. Um, the heart attacks, the, the diabetes, um, uh, the, the cancers of the, of the world. Uh, yeah, that's and essentially important. obesity and diabetes is quite the similar disease and uh, you know disease lifestyle or lifestyle diseases is a current epidemic mm -hmm. and we are going to be talking about this right after the break stay tuned for more
And welcome back from the break. Uh, we are talking about biokinetics and sports science. Uh, currently in studio with guest Mr. Avinesh Basad, senior biokineticist. And uh, currently we just left off on lifestyle diseases and how can biokinetics or essentially movement control an epidemic that we are currently facing? Uh, we can exercise contribute to an epidemic such as diabetes, obesity, heart disease? You know, where does biokinetics fit in with that? Oh, absolutely. I think, I mean, we want to get the nation moving. Um, and I think we found that uh, just using one facet of, of, of um, eating correctly is probably not enough. I think it, it's vital. Uh, we need to have a look at what we eat. Yeah. Um, but uh, I think we need to get people moving. Uh, like I said, I mean, um, we're very um, used to jumping in the car and <laughs> going down to the road to buy a loaf of bread and milk. Yeah. Um, I think um, people need to get out and, and experience cities and experience the, the country and, um, and move their feet and walk. Um, yeah. I think yeah, we, we need to do those kind of things and, and that will definitely have a big issue on in terms of um, our body structure and, and actually what's going on inside our bodies. Yeah. That's yeah. important. Absolutely. And you know, I just recently have seen some of the articles have that have come out in the literature that had shown that uh, exercise or physical activity has contributed minimally to such lifestyle diseases, um, specifically obesity. I mean, what's our take on that with biokinetics? I mean, for over the years, we have been taught in how to manage an obese client or how to, you know, manage a person who is having, having problems with weight management. Yeah, I think I mean, like, like I said, it, it's important that we use all those different modalities. Uh, um, I think just using exercise is not good enough. Yeah. Um, we know that exercise is a benefit, absolutely. Um, but we can't rely just on exercise. We have to make sure that all the other areas are taken care of, uh, including psychology, including eating correctly. Um, I mean, in effect, diabetes and, and, and conditions like that is, is a disease of lifestyle. And yeah. because our lifestyles are so bad, we highly stress individuals. Yes. Um, we eat terribly. I mean, we're talking about the, the fast foods, uh, yeah. like the McDonald's and the Burger Kings and, and things like that. Um, I think we need to have a look at all of those areas of ourselves and say, OK, I, mean, I need to make a concerted decision and, yeah. um, to, to take care of myself and, and be healthy. Uh, and Exercise, we know, has this positive effect on your body. Um, it makes you feel better when you're out there and yeah. enjoying the environment. Um, and if anything, I mean, that, that, that is the best thing about exercise. It's just it makes you feel so much better. Absolutely. And, you know, with exercise, a lot out there feel eat what you want, do what you want, but as long as you're exercising, everything will be fine. Do we think that's no, true? No, I don't think so at all. <laughs> <laughs> Not at all. I think, I mean, we see a lot of these weekend warriors. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> and uh, I think you have to be, uh, like I say, I mean, I think everything in proportion is, is ideal. Um, so if you, uh, we're not saying don't have the, the McDonald's and don't have the Burger Kings, but be proportionate over what you, what you do with yourself. Yeah. Um, you need a little bit of stress in your life. That's normal. Yes. Um, but you do need all those other good things as well, like uh, vegetables every day, yeah. um, like uh, exercising, like 20 minutes of walking daily. Um, yeah. So the, the getting enough sleep at night. I mean, those are all important aspects of lifestyle. Yeah. Um, and if we have those little areas covered, then I, th I think really proportion is, is vital. Yeah, I think all those holistic factors that you've mentioned, you know, that everything counts and, you know, that there's each finger on the hand yes. is, is no different, you know. Definitely. I mean, they, they all actually vary in their own proportion, but mm -hmm. if you put them together, you know, one can achieve a result. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And, um, you know, just going forward that not just with the profession of biokinetics or with physiotherapy, uh, but just that recently in the last five years or so, we've realized that, you know, nutrition in itself or just eating has played a big role in someone's life because we're doing it every day. That's right. Yeah, everyone yeah. is eating, but not everyone is exercising. Not everyone is having stress. Not everyone is having a certain amount of, of trouble. But as a biokineticist or as a health professional out there, how do we counteract our scope of practice when it comes to nutrition or when it comes to you know, giving guidance to patients out there with regards to eating? Well, I think <coughs> the simple things is, uh, is easy to, to tackle. Um, <coughs> nutrition is not a forte of mine. Um, so I would rather refer to a dietitian. Uh, to tell you the truth. Yeah. Um, however, simple guidelines like eating proportionately. Uh, I mean, 
you don't expect to not eat breakfast and lunch and then eat a huge meal at dinner. Um, simple things like that. Choose, choose healthier options. Um, <clears throat> instead of having a bag of crisps at lunchtime, which unfortunately I did <laughs> coming here today, um, choose healthier options. Choose dried fruit, choose nuts. Um, simple things like that. Uh, making sure you eat breakfast in the morning. I mean, rushing out with a cup of coffee is not good enough, unfortunately. Yeah. I mean, yeah. if you've got a, a, a nine hour day and for the first three hours, you're completely down because you've just had a cup of coffee. Um, yeah. That's just, yeah. it, it just sets you up for, for poor, a poor intake of, of, uh, of food later on in the day because then you're just gonna be stuffing whatever you see. And uh, Absolutely. That, that's, that's what happens. Yeah, I think it's <coughs> about managing your lifestyle essentially a bit better, you yeah. know, not just working smart, but with that time management. But I think if we kind of shift away now and not just looking at lifestyle diseases or preventative diseases or things which are quite either chronic disease or orthopedic rehabilitation with movement, that mm -hmm. essentially what a biokinetics does, I'm sure that a lot would want to know where does sports science come in? You know, where does that factor in? And, you know, is biokinetics actually at a specialization of sports? science is there something as a specialization in our in our discipline well, yeah I guess um, you could probably say that um, I think the the sports scientists focus more on um, the use of exercise and physiology specifically yeah. and how that can be an exercise modality yes. um, I think they they kind of stay away from uh, the treatment protocols of the the chronic diseases, the the cardiac conditions, the uh, uh, orthopedic kind of uh, concerns, and focus more on the healthy individual um, or the general population and how to make them even healthier. Uh, <clears throat> but then they go on to um, sports administration and coaching. Um, yeah, so using exercise through all of those different aspects of uh, of exercise. And uh, there's also other types of uh, sports science, um, you know, professions that encompass high performance. Yes, or absolutely. Yeah. Strength and conditioning, or they're even looking at sports psychology as a you know subdiscipline of uh, of sports absolutely, sciences. Yeah. You know, just merely to improve the performance uh, mm -hmm. uh, out there. So you know, so if if one has to go out there and say, hey, I want to actually improve my sport, or I want to improve my running time, what's the first port of call? What do they do, and where do they go? Well, I think um, the important thing is that if you don't have an existing condition or, or medical problem, uh, then definitely to approach a, a sports scientist. Um, and you can find them in any form. So uh, most of them uh, are coaches. So could the correct coach, um, whether you want to run uh, a 21K uh, race or you want to do the Argus, I think it's, it's yeah. uh, important that you find the correct person. Um, I don't think it's necessary to go and see a physiotherapist or a bioanalysis unless there is some underlying medical condition that you need to be worried about. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think uh, the the coaches are the, the the right people to 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 contact at this kind of situation. Fantastic. So I think just moving forward, is there any one thing that you would like to advise anyone out there in terms of just health, lifestyle, or just movement? You know, what can they do differently that could make their quality of life a bit better? Well, one thing would be to take the stairs, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> but if you don't have stairs, I think, uh, yeah, just to, 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 to get out there and experience, experience the world. Um, I know it, it's really difficult for all of us, I mean, depending on where we live and our, our jobs and those kind of things. Um, but, uh, I mean, we live in, in a fantastic uh, city like Cape Town. And yeah. if you find out how many people have actually walked in the forest or up the mountain, <laughs> um, you could probably find that maybe maybe five or ten percent. And and mm -hmm. people might say now it's for the elitist and stuff like that. I think it's yeah, not. I absolutely. think it's for everybody. Yeah. Um, so even walking around the park um, for twenty minutes a day yeah. de-stresses you and and prepares you prepares your body and, and, and keeps you healthy. Absolutely. I mean, you know, there was that common exercise is medicine advice that said that, you know, if you're sick, go for a walk. <laughs> if you're stressed, go for a run. And, you know, the endorphins that are released absolutely. from there yeah. does so much of a difference. Avi, thank you so much for coming to, on to the show. It was an absolute pleasure to have you. Thank it's you. Uh, really a pleasure to have you on board, and we hope to see you soon. Thanks. That's for today looking at biokinetics and sports science. Stay in touch for our next episode when we speak to Dr. Sesha West, when we'll be talking about the difference between physical activity and exercise. Until then, I'm Habib Nurbai on Sports and Health with Dean TV. Take care, bye.